arms and make them look like a tree. <coughs> or that are under, make your body look like a rock that is under. The Words Come Alive program has two goals. One is to really try and allow the kids to find a deeper understanding of what they're reading in class or a text or what they're studying, as well as to develop a deeper sense of an art form. We know that, that people learn in different ways, and some kids learn kinesthetically. And you'll see certain kids really able to connect with material more when they feel it in their body versus when they sit down and they just read it in a book. So what we want to try and do is to help the children find ways to interpret what they're reading or what they're studying, to really dive into the characters or the animals in the rainforest or the rivers and the streams, the different qualities of what's there. So through movement, I feel like the kids are able to just become a little bit more invested and interpret what they've been studying. A jump on the emergent layer. And three. Freeze your shake, hold it very still, and when we see that it is frozen and still, we'll begin with our music and with our This school, Flynn Elementary, contacted the Flynn Theater and suggested that they start to work together because they share the same namesake. Just sitting down and saying, okay, we're gonna use we're gonna use art, we're gonna use drama and dance to help build reading comprehension skills. And at the end of those two years, the teacher sat down with uh, members of the education department of the Flynn and created a, a book called The Words Come Alive book, which really breaks down for a teacher the different activities. That means, is this cover moving? No. No, no dancers sometimes move, and we've of course done a lot of moving today. Sometimes they freeze, and we've done that too. These are going to be still shapes. If someone took your picture and put it on the cover, it would be frozen. Maybe your shape will be a monkey skin. Or maybe your shape will be a wow. bird flying. Look how big my shape is. Or maybe it will be on the forest floor and it will be a flower or a moving. Spider. Or a spider or a snake. Dancers, what will make this so interesting? Do you see that there are shapes and animals and things on all the layers of the rainforest? So if the person next to you makes a shape on the forest floor, Maybe where should you make your shape? Would it be more interesting as a picture or less interesting if they were all on the forest floor? It would be less, less interesting. interesting. So we're going to try and use the forest floor. Everyone say it with me. Forest floor, understory, canopy, emergent layer. We're going to try and use all of those layers we start very simply. We started on the first day with how to freeze into shape, how to hold your body still, and then different ways to move. And we, I think we actually have, on the first day we made a list of what might a dancer do, and we just brainstormed. A dancer might do a split. That's a really big one. Run, curve, freeze into shape, leap, explode. We brainstormed all the different ways that we thought dancers could move, or not move, and then we explored them. So when you tell me your name, can you make for me a zigzag shape? Ready? Go. Maddie T. Show me a zigzag shape. Maddie T. Go. Michael. Michael, show me a zigzag shape. Go ahead. Paul, show me a zigzag shape. Oh, I love that. Michael, Paul. Hannah. Hannah, zigzag shape. Daniel. Daniel, let's see. Whoa, very fancy. Yes. Bria. Bria. Oh, you see how quickly she made that shape? Yes. After that, they actually went to go see a performance at the Flynn Theater by the Martha Graham Dance Company. And with that information, we were able to then say, well, if we know how to be dancers, then let's dance this story about the rainforest. Let's really dive in deep and see what we can discover about what it feels like to be in the rainforest. Today, what we did, we 
started with a freeze activity, which Claire led, and that's one of the warm-ups in the Words Come Alive book. And then we moved on to a circle pass. And we did a mirror activity and then a tableau. And those are all spelled out in this literature that was created by both Flynn Theater education um, people and um, people from the Flynn Elementary School. A lot of what we also work on is um, diving specifically into vocabulary words. And in this lesson, for example, we were reading about the sloth, and I came upon the word plodding. And the sloth will so the plod, sloth which is a word that you don't usually use. And so if you talk about the word plod, kids might get it. But if you actually physicalize, well, what does it mean to plod? Is that a heavy word or a light word? We'll try it in our bodies. You get a really deep understanding of that vocabulary word. And then that can inform not only what you think about the sloth, but then your dancing as well. A three-toed sloth had begun climbing down from the canopy when the men first appeared. Back a little bit, okay? Thank you. Only now did she reach the ground. Plodding. Plodding. Every day I do read aloud at, um, at during snack time so we don't waste a minute, you know. And um, as soon as I use a word that some of them are unfamiliar with, I'll ask them, well, who can demonstrate for me what wow. the word strode across the room looks like? And they'll all be popping up and striding across the room. It's really funny. So, and depending on what vocabulary words are unfamiliar, there's usually one who knows the word, and then they, they'll demonstrate it, and then everybody else will just pop right out of their seats to, to try and show it too. So they're really used to using their bodies in an expressive oh God, way. Okay, let's do two more. Come Here comes a gentle wind in the rainforest. Curvy shapes, gentle wind. How about this time, instead of music, we use our voices to make the wind. Ready? Go. <coughs> to appreciate as an audience is another thing. When we went to the um, Flynn Theater to see the Martha Graham dancers, they knew what it was like to move in all those ways, and they, uh, the um, responses that they wrote were wonderful. They drew pictures of limited costumes, but they also would, they showed the shapes, they told you know, what was different about the different scenes that we'd seen. And they really became a, a more appreciative audience because they'd been there themselves. <laughs> and um, just the fact of having to be a quiet listener and enjoy live performance is something that they're not really used to. They're so used to watching TV and, <laughs> and um, not realizing that once the actors act or the dancers dance, it's over. So they have to be, you know, an appreciative audience and watch. And they learned how to clap appropriately and not <laughs> hoot like they're at a basketball game or something. And um, I think they grew a lot in that way, too. Uh, go.
want to do is take dance, which is such an abstract form of art anyway, and make it accessible to the teachers so that they feel comfortable bringing it into their classrooms and using it as a way to help with their curriculum building. So we start really simply with movements and shapes. You know, we, we're not going to try and create a grand dance, but let's freeze and let's stop and let's talk about the qualities not only of what your body is doing, but then how does that really inform what we've been studying? And in this case, that would be the rainforest. So with a tree, you know, if we said, let's create a dance about trees, it might sound intimidating. But if you say, okay, well, a tree trunk is straight, so we'll make straight legs. And the branches might be, might be jagged, if it's a jagged looking tree or a sharp tree, so it might have pointy jagged branches that might move a little bit in the wind and we break it down in ways so that the kids can really feel well, this is what it feels like to be in the rainforest or to be a part of the rainforest or a character in a novel or something that they're studying in class um, versus saying let's dance and and leaving it as a as a giant abstract form that can be intimidating we want to just increase the comfort level of the art and increase the understanding of the kids not only of the art but of what they're studying root the system of the tree this is very good. Go have a seat over there. I want to see what your shapes look like. This looks like a butterfly sitting underneath a tree. I want a butterfly that has a broken ring. Oh, well, have a seat. This almost to me looks like a jaguar that's getting ready to pounce from under the tree. Have a seat. Go have a seat with your legs crossed on the rug. Legs crossed on the rug. This looks like a vine that's curving around the tree, is it? Are you a vine? Oh my gosh! Go have a seat, please. Legs crossed. Are you a vine wrapped around the tree? Okay, be very careful. Go have a seat. Here we have a snake under a tree, and he's being careful not to touch the tree, because these shapes can be close but not touching. Okay, dancers, please go have a seat right over here. I did drama before. I didn't do dance, and I've never felt comfortable with dance, but when we did the relationship with the Flynn doing drama, we, it, we did small plays, and we started small, and, you know, did warm-up activities similar to the dance, but it, it was just incredible to me how much, you know, certain kids who, could, who hadn't shown, you know, <laughs> since the beginning of the year started to really feel confidence because they were good at acting. And the same is with dance. If kids recognize who's, you know, an expert, and they appreciate them for it. And um, it's because Flynn has quite a few English as uh, second language students, it gives them an opportunity to shine when sometimes they don't otherwise. Uh, Please sit in your spot, cross your legs. Follow me. Reach your arms over your head. And over. Reaching far over. Good work. As high over as you can. Reach your arms up. Now reach your hands in the middle, and we're going to say the words in, 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 in. Reach your arms out. 
the hardest things that we're going to do. It's called making a tableau. Everyone say tableau. Tableau. A tableau is a shape that is a frozen shape. It's not moving. And it represents something. Our tableau is going to represent a rainforest. Take a look, dancers, at this picture. So on the cover, raise your hand if you can tell me something that you see that's on this cover. Mm. Yes. Uh, snake. Snake. What do you see? A monkey. A monkey. What do you see? A person. Okay. What do you see? Tree. A tree. Yes. Uh, boa constrictor. A boa constrictor. What? A jaguar. A parrot family. Oh, good. Roots. I love that. Dancers, there are so many things, but you know what? I don't want to look at the cover. I want you to create your own cover for this book. We are going to pretend like we are the illustrators. Sit up, please, so that I know that you, I have your ears, okay? The illustrator is someone who makes the picture for the book. I already know what's on this cover. Can you make a frozen, interesting cover for me? Yep. I bet you can.